We're going to uh, have four speakers today. First, Dr. Gordon Gee, president of WVU, then Dr. Jerome Gilbert from uh, Marshall, and lastly, Secretary of, the, of Commerce, Woody Thrasher. And then we'll have Rob Alsop, who is vice president for strategic initiatives at WVU, will give some of the details about uh, what are in the, the summaries uh, of the report. Uh, there will be a news release uh, released as soon as, the, uh, as soon as the news conference is over. We will take questions afterwards, and we'll just do them centrally up here. So with that, you're not here to listen to me, Dr. Gee. Well, I am really irritated at uh, Marshall University. They had those fog machines out there at the airport. <laughs> Dr. Gilbert, uh, my great friend, and, uh, and our Secretary of uh, Commerce is here. So I'm going to be very, I'm going to be very quick. This, I, I, I am not a West Virginian by birth. I chose to return to this state because of the fact that it is a state of hope and resiliency. It's a state of opportunity. But we need to make that true now. And uh, what I think that you have seen is state government through, through the Department of Commerce, um, our legislative leaders who are here, um, and uh, Marshall University and, uh, and West Virginia University believe that we are not about competition, but rather that we're about collaboration and we're about uh, a commitment to West Virginia. So this is, so our politics today are blue and gold and green and white and um, whatever we want to want them to be, but they are not about partisan issues. It's about the future of this state. And the only way we can think about that is by developing a strategy in which uh, we all uh, stack hands and in which we uh, come together and say we're going to rise above any particular objections to come to a common good and common ground. And uh, we're grateful that, uh, that everyone is here, and we're grateful that we have been able to do that. As you know, uh, about a year or so ago, we determined that the best way for us to get the best ideas was to talk to our people. There are 1.8 million West Virginians, and they want to hear our ideas, but they want to tell us their ideas. So we have, we have uh, done a lot of listening. Secondly of all, we hired uh, McKinsey and Company, the best consulting firm in the world, um, to come in not to tell us how we do things in West Virginia, but rather to tell us about the possibilities and the opportunities. And they've done a wonderful job in that regard. But most importantly, what, what it's about, it's about all of us, I think, uh, believing that our future is very bright, and I believe that. I believe that more than anything I can say, but, but, but uh, what we now have to do is we have to not talk about a bright future, we have to talk about the hard work that will make that future bright and to give people hope. So saying that, Dr. Gilbert, it's your turn, okay? Thank you. I'm Jerry Gilbert, president at Marshall University, and I want to say that we're delighted to be partnering with the Department of Commerce and WVU on a roadmap that will take the, the uh, state forward. This project is a great collaborative effort which will allow higher education to engage with our state's business leaders in moving the state into the future. We will work alongside the National Guard, imagine the uh, Business Roundtable, the Chamber of Commerce, uh, Tech Connect, and discover the real West Virginia Foundation in making this happen for all of West Virginia. In my remarks at the Business Summit uh, this past uh, year, I made three points. One was that we seek serious collaboration that focuses on win-win situations. Just like Gordon Gee said, there are no more silos, there are no more me first when it comes to economic development, and this project does that. Number two, we need to target university and state resources to build strengths. Uh, this project does that well in addressing new opportunities as well. And number three, we need to utilize any and all resources at our disposal to create jobs. This partnership is about creating opportunities and creating jobs by looking at our assets as at the global perspective. It pairs those assets with the current economic trend so that we can leverage our assets for future growth. Marshall is all about being a partner and we want to work together 
to move West Virginia forward. We are delighted to be here. Thank you. Uh, good morning. Great day here today. Um, uh, so the governor's initiative uh, is very clear. That's to drive the state of West Virginia from 50th to someplace substantially better. And his direction of me was very clear. That was to create jobs. He's doing that immediately with the road bond that's going to be up for election in the very near future. And the passage of that will very much help stimulate this economy right out of the chute. But in order for it to be sustained, we have to have a backstop and we have to have a long-term plan. As my mother used to say, if you aim at nothing, Woody, you're bound to hit it. So what this plan does is it gives us a blueprint for how we dramatically reshape West Virginia's economy. It deals with the specifics that need to be addressed in terms of opportunities, restructuring of government, and all those sorts of fundamental things that are necessary to really bring about significant change. But I believe if we stick with this, and, and there are going to be some unpopular decisions along the way, it's always tough with change, there's always a hesitancy to do it, but I think if we adopt this plan, we follow through with it, I think it's a great blueprint to really drive West Virginia to the forefront. Commerce is excited to be part of it. Thank you. Okay, well, good morning. Uh, my name is Rob Alsop. I'm um, honored to have the privilege to work for West Virginia University uh, and be part of this project uh, moving forward. And so we've talked a lot about um, collaboration. We've talked a lot about stacking hands. We've talked about the need to move uh, West Virginia forward. That really, President Gee started men mentioned, started several months ago when we began collaborating uh, with uh, our consultant, McKenzie, uh, then with stakeholders around the state, with Commerce, with our friends at Marshall, uh, moving forward, and so today's really a pivot. We have a summary of findings that will be available on um, our website. We have a PowerPoint that I'm going to walk through uh, where we're going to talk about some of the things that we have seen, um, some of the things that we've heard, and a roadmap for moving forward for West Virginia and, and really hopefully what we think is a catalyst for discussion and moving things forward. So to start at the top level, we all care about West Virginia. We all want to make a difference. Um, as I look at it, we all probably have in our mind what the, we think the arc of West Virginia has been and what it's going to be. Um, what this project, when it gets really down to it, is a number of us want to be disruptive. Um, we want to do disruptive things for our state that's going to take the arc from here and start to move it up forward um, in any number of sectors, and I'll talk a little bit about that. But we really want to be a disruptive force for the next six months, two years, 15 years, 20 years moving forward. And on the um, uh, second page, Rock, if you're there, go there, a really nice statement of how we're moving forward. So what we've asked McKinsey to do and with our stakeholders is really focus on data and look at our strengths and opportunities, identify initiatives that will provide short, which provide the collaboration for both short and long-term success in revitalizing our economy. It's all about creating jobs. Um, it solves a lot of things for our state if we focus on that as the governor and Secretary Thrasher have all um, um, moved us forward on uh, in, in our changing economic and technological landscape. And so that's really a function of, of two things. What are the economic enablers that are going to allow us to grow? What is it about West Virginia where we have strengths, we have weaknesses um, that we can build upon? And then you overlay from that, what are our um, economic sectors that are going to grow? And the way I look at it pretty simply is, you know, this has disrupted, an iPhone has disrupted a lot of different technologies and a lot of different business models, from teleprompters to cameras, all the way across the board. So over the next 10 to 15 years, whether it's um, automated vehicles, where they say my daughter will never need a driver's license, or chemicals, or whatever it will be, what are the disruptive parts of our economy, our regional economy, that are really going to take off? So let's look at the assets we have, where we can improve, and how can we grab on to those sectors that are really going to disrupt and create job growth for our state? So it's really a, it's a, it's a heat map of our assets and trying to predict and using McKinsey's expertise and data to see where we're going and how we can grab hold um, to those sectors. It takes account um, some of the things that we're good at, 
um, where we have strengths we need to build upon, but really what, what's going to grow from our economy and how can we be helpful? Um, it, it takes and it's going to take the continued effort of our legislature, our business community, our nonprofits, our, uni our universities, our community colleges, and, and K-12 to really all stack hands and move things forward. Um, one caveat, um, I think I've talked about what the report is. We have tried not to be redundant um, or there's things that we, we very much know. So, so we know we're going to do all we can to support the coal industry. It's been hard times. There's been a little bit of a rebound. Uh, it's always going to be a bedrock part of our economy. Um, we, we all work on that. We have an energy institute. The legislature talks about how we can improve uh, the coal in some of those sectors. Also with health. There's some areas that this report was not designed to cover. Some of the things that, that Marshall or WV have covered, we, we've tried again to look at those disruptive sectors and how we can improve some things. So I want to be clear, if you see something not in the report, it's, it's, we're, it's a specific slice that we're trying to look at. So um, if you go to the next slide, economic sectors and economic enablers you see um, some things that McKinsey looked at from a, a very high level. Um, we want to maintain our current industry. Some things that they see some tremendous growth potential of things that we do, um, aerospace, auto parts manufacturing. Secretary Thrasher led the initiative with the governor um, with Toyota, Toyota, Toyota yesterday. Metals manufacturing, um, fulfillment distribution, um, and building products. Um, if you look at sectors where we can differentiate ourselves, um, everybody knows the Marcellus boom. One of the things McKinsey said is that there's really going to be an effort for manufacturing of fine chemicals, and the Canal Valley uh, can once again become a, a leader in that effort. I know there's a lot of work going on, but they see a lot of potential there. Um, carbon fiber reinforced plastics. Um, the folks from McKinsey came in and said, you know what, um, we've been looking for this all over the country, and it turns out you have the IP and some of the businesses here. What, what are carbon fiber reinforced plastics? Think as, as reinforced as steel, but 20% of the weight. Um, and any type of bridge infrastructure, um, um, transportation infrastructure that could benefit the state. And we have the technologies and some of the businesses right here to really leap forward on that. Um, we need to keep um, opportunity on potential opportunities like vehicle plants. Um, and then um, they really see an opportunity for high-end tourism cybersecurity and cloud services for our state. And I'll talk about a couple of those examples here in a little bit. So they've identified some sectors, some we're good at, some we have some opportunities in that we really need to focus on as we move forward. As far as improving, so those are the sectors that they've talked about, the enablers that we have. What is it about West Virginia that we can do and we compete to move forward? And they focused on four things, business climate, innovation and business development, infrastructure and human capital. Some of the things we've all um, thought about, some of the things we haven't. Um, the first thing I, I want to say on the economic enablers is, if you'll flip to the value proposition page, Rock, um, we have a story to tell um, here. You know, I, and I see our speaker and our, our president, um, and I could go back 15 years when workers' compensation was privatized, and the hard work and dedication that was done, that was to improve the business climate. The decisions they made, and some of them were controversial on legal reform, and some of those things were controversial, but they did it so that we would have a better business climate. We have done some things in the state and we need to tell our story and we have some advantages that we need to start talking about. Um, I know the governor talked about the Save Our State campaign and some of those monies. We have a story to tell. We have a tourism story to tell. We have a business climate story to tell that we haven't done in an effective manner and we've got to change that conversation. Um, Macy's didn't select West Virginia because of anything. Procter & Gamble didn't. The Boy Scouts didn't invest five, six and another 300 million on the way um, because there was something wrong with West Virginia. They did it with, because there was something right. Um, so we have a low workforce participation rate. We need to work on that. But we also have the mo one of the most loyal workforces in the country. Uh, I've had 10 jobs in 12 years since I've been out of law school. Companies don't like that type of turnover. But, as, as <laughs> <laughs> but if you have an employee in West Virginia, and everybody knows this, they are loyal to the business and to the people that they work for. And that's something that while our low, low workforce participation rate is, if you get an employee trained and they're yours, they are more loyal here than, than otherwise. You look at our business tax climate. Um, if you look at the overall, and we still have things we need to do, uh, we compete pretty well with some of our sister states. And it's, we saw some tax cuts 10, 12 years ago. Uh, we've seen improvements. Workers' compensation rates were the highest in the country. Now they're among the lowest. A great story that we need to tell. So, so the first thing from this report has taught me is we have a value proposition. If we don't tell our story, no one else is. 
our sister states are going to compete, are going to work with us regionally, but at the end of the day, they want those businesses just like anybody else. So we've got to arm Secretary Thrasher and the Development Office and our Governor and Tourism with, with the resources that they need to be able to tell that story. We need to tell it as well. I, again, I saw the speaker and the president. Their, their speech at the business climate wasn't woe was me. It was we've turned a corner and we're moving forward in a very optimistic fashion. We've got to continue to do that. It doesn't mean that we don't have work to do. So you talk about our economic enablers and some of the things that McKenzie talked about. Um, and I'll just walk through some of these on, and I know you can't see this, we'll have these things on the web, but for business climate, it is true that um, cost of doing business, um, we, we compete very well. Um, we've had energy costs that have risen. We used to be the second or third uh, lowest in the country. That's risen. Now, what caused that? I wouldn't pretend to know. I would suspect that um, partly it's because of rate base. When Century Aluminum leaves and you can only spread it out over so many customers, there's an impact there. We all know the federal government intentionally has increased the cost of Appalachian coal. Um, there may be some regulatory things. But what they told us is if we want to have a manufacturing base in 15 years, you better make sure you have a solution to the energy problem. So we need to get everybody together, and that's one of our task force. So we're going to talk with the energy leaders of this state to say, how is it from a long-term strategy perspective we can solve that issue that McKinsey has said is something we need to do? Um, I, don't know, the, I know we've talked about this. The taxation of um, business personal property in the state sticks out like a sore thumb, and it needs to be addressed, and it's not easy. That's one of the things McKinsey said we need to focus on. We birth far too few small businesses, and way too many of them die. Um, small businesses are 98% of what we're doing in this state, of the businesses in this state. We're a rural state. That means that we need to stop with silos. We need to be more integrated. We need to provide the services that are going to allow them to compete on the web and, and move forward. Things that we can do. Um, we need to look at the change in mixes of our incentives. Um, one of the things that um, we'll be talking about in commerce has already started working on is a site certification program, and I'll, I'll talk about that. Um, as it relates to infrastructure, McKenzie confirmed what the governor has said and the legislature did on a bipartisan basis. We've got to upgrade our infrastructure. It's got to move forward. We've got to do that if we expect uh, to compete moving forward. Same thing with broadband. There's been a lot of invested in broadband in this state, but we are not where we need to be from that perspective. And then from human capital, um, you know, they did some things like mentioning that you have a low workforce participation rate, but you're really low as it relates to um, female population and individuals with disabilities? And are there policies that the legislature could look at to try to, to have an impact on that, um, how we could move forward? Again, looking at the data of what's underlying some of those big problems we have and starting to solve them. Um, so, so, so we do have some work to do, but we've got a roadmap as to how we can work forward um, on it. Uh, if you'll slip to the next slide, Rock, on impl implementation. Um, so one of the things that, um, our, our, that our West Virginia Forward effort has done has been to try to look at um, how we can break these things down. And so there's really six initiatives. Business attraction, human capital strategy, local business support, innovation leadership, sector diversification, and infrastructure investment. And so one of the things we hope to talk about moving forward from an implementation strategy is how we go at each of those, how, how, how we go at each of those initiatives. Um, is it commercializing our IP on carbon fiber reinforced plastics? Uh, Rebranding our business climate? setting up an innovation council to move the state forward from an entrepreneurship perspective. What are we doing for small business support and tourism? Um, it gives us a lot of data that we have to really be able to um, look at who we are and the problems that we can solve. Um, everybody knows we have an opioid problem. Everybody knows we need to align our STEM um, um, education at the community college and higher ed level of the K through 12, move that forward. All things that we really have a little bit more data as to how we can move forward. So um, just a couple more things. Um, I mentioned three things. I mentioned site certification. Um, uh, I mentioned cloud and data and tourism. Let me just give you a couple, three examples of things that, that, that West Virginia Forward has, has uncovered. So it's no question we have top topography limits on large sites in West Virginia. What we don't do, and we don't do as well as our competitors, um, is a site certification program. Um, Ohio has it, Kentucky has it. They have certified sites that are up to speed and ready for development. Um, we have identified sites, but we don't go through the type of rigorous program so that we can link up the businesses looking in West Virginia to move things forward from a site perspective. Um, that takes collaboration from a number of different entities and it takes some resources with our development office to really be able to move uh, and move quickly. Um, as you look at cloud and data, um, we have a strong value proposition for that. Um, really example that opened this up for me, McKinsey did, a, did an analysis and 
there's always a couple of caveats. Um, one of which is you got to have the top broadband s services. But if you assume that a data center, we're going to take care of that aspect. If you look at cost of land, if you look at energy costs, if you look at cost of labor, um, they cited a plant in Virginia and they cited a plant in Charleston. And from an economic perspective, it was a better economic value to put the data center in West Virginia. Um, we have opportunities here that we have to go over from that perspective, and I know um, that, w that we can do it. Um, you know, and again, telling our story, low turnover rate, um, high rate of home ownership, low cost of living, easy access to D.C. and Pittsburgh. Um, we're safe distances from federal sites, but we're close enough to make a difference, uh, right in that sort of Goldilocks um, standard. And we actually have some favorable policies if you look specifically at the IT space. Um, that's a sector that we can go after and compete. If you talk to any Fortune 500 company CEO, they're going to tell you that their number one threat right now is cybersecurity. Um, it's an area that President Gee has challenged WVU to be better at in terms of uh, majors and academic programming across, across our university and something with some of our assets in Clarksburg and, and um, Fairmont that we really can leverage to move things forward. But we have a value proposition on data and cloud. Tourism. Um, it was in the paper yesterday that um, um, white water rafting across the country is stabilized, but for some reason five years ago we had 220,000 visits and we're down to 100,000 visits this year. Um, th they say it's a decline of tourism from a marketing perspective. The folks from West Virginia Forward, when they look at tourism, we think we're a tourism state. Average stay for tourism, someone spends four nights and $500. We're two nights and $155. We have the ability to go after older folks who to tend to spend more money and stay longer when they go. So we've already given data to the Department of, uh, to, and I see Chelsea, to tourism to try to look at that from a data perspective and get a fine-tuned pitch to where we can get people to come here longer and spend more money here in West Virginia from a tourism perspective. And it's something where everybody can win. If you look at the three strategies for tourism, we can expand adventure options in the southern region, really with the Boy Scouts and the opportunities there. Um, second home buyers in our eastern panhandle, um, and um, high-income retirees in the north, particularly as there's a renaissance going in Pittsburgh, we need to really leap onto that uh, moving forward. Um, so those are um, three areas where we think that we have a particular opportunity for um, moving forward. So last thing I'll say, and then um, um, we'll move on next, is we do have an implementation structure. There have been plenty of studies that have been done before. Some good work has come from them. Not everything was accomplished. And so the key isn't the summary of findings that's released and all the work that's done, although it's been important. It's where we go from here. It's why I'm thrilled that we've partnered with the Commerce Department and Marshall um, to create a structure of accountability and engage stakeholders. Um, we, can't, we don't have all the answers. We know some of the right questions now, and we know some of the answers, but it's going to take engaging with the legislature. It's going to take engaging with our energy sectors, with our manufacturing sectors, to really look at some of this data and move things forward. Uh, we do have a steering committee that we'll be working on with representatives from um, uh, both the universities, the Commerce Department, and some of the folks who have invested to make this project a reality that we'll be um, working on, as well as an implementation working group. Some of the first implementation teams that we'll be moving forward on um, uh, will be energy, business climate, human capital, and entrepreneurship. And so you can see some of the things that I've talked about that we'll be engaging um, moving forward uh, for our, our working groups. Um, and then finally, in conclusion, um, we think we have a strategic plan, some of it at a high level, some of it not, to really identify growing sectors of our economy and help us latch on to them. Um, so I'm here. I've got three daughters. I've, they need for nothing and want for very little. They think the world's their oyster. But I know pretty soon they're going to be making decisions to where they want to be. And we're all here because we want them to say that there's no choice in what they're going to do. So what it's very, very simple at the end of the day for me is we think we can make a difference together um, and why I'm thrilled to be part of this um, initiative with our governor, um, our commerce secretary, and our universities moving forward. So um, with that, I think we're happy to take any questions. I know our governor was um, had a tight schedule uh, and may stop by, but with that, I'm happy to take or any of the other um, principals to take any questions. So if, uh, <clears throat> uh, as I said, um, this PowerPoint will be posted on our website. There will also be a Q&A that will be there. It's uh, wvforward.wvu.edu. Uh, it, it may even be live as we speak. Um, so if there are any questions, uh, please uh, raise your hand, identify yourself, and who you want to ask of the four. So any questions? Don. 
Don Smith, West Virginia Press Association. Rob, the business tax plan, what are the, can you expand a little bit of the elements that you look at that make that up? We were by far off the, off the level there, maybe the most out of range. Can you explain what goes into that a little bit more? Sure. So if you look at our corporate net income tax rate, um, that's declined significantly in recent years. If you look at um, our business franchise tax in terms of a business tax that was eliminated over the past several years, if you look at where we are from a business tax climate perspective on businesses, we still have work to do. I know the coal industry has concerns over the severance tax from that perspective. Again, coal wasn't really specifically addressed in that report, but we do have, we, I guess the key point from that is we have a good story to tell in terms of what our business tax structure looks like, but we still also have work to do on things like the personal property taxes. But it is a combination of all the taxes that a, I think the question they ask is, when a business comes to West Virginia, what are the inputs that they're going to look at and um, from a, a cost of doing business perspective? And so it was a, a number of things about our tax structure that were looked at. Any other questions? All right. Well, thank you. As I said, it's all on wdforward.wvu.edu, and for the media, there'll be a release out shortly. Thank you. Um, we have Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Governor Jim Justice. incredible day. West Virginia Forward, think about it. You've got uh, the coming together of our Commerce Department, the coming together of WVU and Marshall. The smart people in the world are going to come and they're going to try to work on projects and work on ways to direct us and give us ideas. A think tank, basically, that's going to give us a roadmap, a roadmap that could lead us to what all of us want so badly, and that is boosting our economy, getting us out of dead last, getting us out of 50th. Now, let me say this real quickly, because I'm not going to speak long today, which you'll be happy about, but I will tell you that uh, these great institutions are on the move. You know, what Gordon Gee has done at WVU is unbelievable. And what Dr. Gilbert is doing at Marshall is beginning to be unbelievable and show great fruit. Now, we've got to recognize what higher ed means to our state. A lot of times, we just automatically look at higher ed and say, well, we've got this hole in the bucket. We can take a little bit more out of higher ed. And we basically continue to dumb down lots and lots and lots of stuff. And we've got to quit that. Now, I, I would say this, that I very proudly could say we're on the move. We're starting to move, and you know it. You know it. You feel it. You feel it when you walk in communities and you see hope that maybe was dashed and not there six or nine months ago. We're starting to really move. Now, I would tell all of you, everybody, that the biggest launching pad to movement that this state has ever had is going to happen on October the 7th. And if we miss that, I don't know what we do. I would tell any and everybody just one simple thing about the road bond referendum. Somebody tell me what is the downside of a yes vote? A yes vote, what is the downside? Now, I'll tell you what the downside is of a no vote. 
The downside of a no vote is where are we going to turn? What are we going to do? Really and truly, the only revenue that went into the budget the last go round was the revenue that I put in from the economic benefit of our roads. We have to pull that back out. Now, if you start pulling that back out, what happens? I'll tell you what happens is teetotal chaos. It's $129 million. Where's it going to come from? It's going to come from you guys. It's going to come from K through 12. It's going to come from Medicaid. It's going to come from absolute, our vets, and on and on. And that's just the starting point. There'll have to be unbelievable cuts. There will be no revenue. And you know, the last thing I would say in regard to the roads is just this simple, simple point. Is anyone that would say no, have them look out their car window and take a really good look at the road that they're driving on. Because they're going to be seeing just that or worse for a long time to come. And then just envision throwing away tens of thousands of jobs that West Virginians need desperately. And then just envision throwing away all the revenue that comes with that. And think of all the people that would love to come here if we had a standard of life, good roads, good roads, manufacturing, tourism, on and on and on. Now, today we congratulate these great universities, wherever Woody is, and the great, there he is, and the great work that commerce is doing. There's things happening in this state. Yesterday, Toyota, $115 more million. There's stuff happening in this state all over the place. There's going to be more and more announcements that are going to be coming, boom, boom, boom. Our coal miners are going back to work. I said it yesterday in Morgantown. A year ago, nine months ago, you could have had a job at $16 an hour to coal mines. You could have had a line of people from here to the cows come home wanting that job. Today, every single coal company is saying, we'll pay $30 an hour, and we can't find people to fill the jobs. That's good stuff. That's good stuff. You know, the guy that's running the bulldozer is probably making close to $100,000 a year now. We shouldn't begrudge that. We ought to be so happy for that, it's unbelievable. Because when you drive through the community, the Dairy Queen's full, Kroger's is full, there's people walking around the car lots. I mean, it's happening. And that's good stuff. So again, congratulations, guys, in every way. And God bless you for your forward thinking and your love for this great state. So I'm done. God bless you.